Hi class, this is your Professor Joseph. Welcome to Phil 20A. Um, we are in the winter 2021 semester, which is six weeks for this class. Um, yeah, welcome to Introduction to Ancient Philosophy, Pre-Socratic to the Medieval Period. Okay, so purpose of this video is for me to tell you what I expect of you in this class. And then the second reason is that it will help you figure out whether you want to be in this class or not. Now, most of you are registered for it, so obviously you think you want to be here. But, you know, once I tell you what I expect of you, it'll help you solidify that or not. So I try to go down as if you were, I try to uh, break this down to you as if you were in class with me on the first day when we review my syllabus. That's kind of what I'm doing in this video, okay? I'm trying to give you some good detail. So here we go. The very first thing you do when you come to this class, you're in Canvas, you log in, you can click home or whatever. But when you're on the home page and you scroll down, this is your syllabus. That whole front page is, is your syllabus, okay? So what I also do is you'll have this downloadable syllabus. Um, it says this is coming soon. Um, you can click on it and download the syllabus if you want. Otherwise, that whole page is your syllabus. Also, I'll, this video that I'm making right now, I will upload it here. You can watch it over and over. So um, there you go. So yeah, what we'll do, we'll eventually get down here. But this breaks down the course, you know, for six weeks, week one, all the way to week six, exactly what I expect of you, the dates and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get there. All right, so... The bottom line for me, the very first thing you got to do this first week, you got to complete a syllabus quiz and a getting to know you discussion forum. It takes a half an hour max to complete all this. You got to do that by Wednesday, January 6th by midnight. Otherwise, Thursday morning, I'll drop you from the class. This ensures that you're actually in my class and you're participating in the class. Okay. Some people register for classes. They don't do anything and fail out on purpose. Um, I'll drop you for their, you know, I'll drop you in the first week. After that, if you complete my syllabus quiz and my getting to know you discussion forum, after that point, if you fail out of this class, that's on you, okay? I can't make you do the work, but I won't remind you every week, hey, I think you're failing, maybe you wanna drop. We're adults here in college, so that's up to you, okay? You contact the registrar's office, drop, do whatever you want, or contact me if you want to, and I'll help you out. But we're all adults, so I'm just saying, once you complete those first two things, you're in my class. Okay. Or you're, you're remaining in my class until you decide to drop or whatever. And they're pretty easy. Um, the syllabus quiz just makes you read my syllabus and I ask you 10 questions. And I think you can repeat it two or three times till you get 100. And then the getting to know you, um, you can find these all on modules. So everything you do in this class, you click over here. It's basically broken down by week. So I'll go up here. So week one, Monday the 4th or January the 4th through the 10th, you know, those are the dates. All this stuff is if you are new to online and you want some more help with, you know, videos that walk you through just online education in general. If you've already taken an online, cl online class and you're familiar with Canvas, skip all that. Go to syllabus orientation quiz. Go to welcome activity, getting to know you. Complete those, you're dialed in. Then you can start with week one and your assignments, and we'll get there. Welcome activity and getting to know you. Why are you taking this class? What's your major? How many years you've been at Mount Sac? What's your most, you know, whatever, whatever. Then you got to post a picture. It's the most perfect scenario for you to relax in. If you don't know how to post a picture, call the Canvas number, and I'll show you that in a second. If you tell me, hey, I don't know how to post one, I'm going to take all points. That's part of your assignment. you got to learn how to do that. And it's easy. Call Canvas. They'll log in your class, and they'll show you how to do it. And then you must make one reply to another student. Hey, you know, so what this does is everybody gets to know each other, and I get to know you. And I'll make a post as well about me. So you got to do those two things. Again, this is on the modules page. You'll see all your assignments. And then if you go back to home, you're right back where you started. So here we are. You're in section or CRN 20293. It's all online. I'm Joseph Kromoski, your professor. 
Best way to get a hold of me is to email me. Do not use the Canvas inbox. I don't check that. And even if I were to check it, I can't respond to you through my phone. So once again, use this email. I'll respond to you back within 24 hours. Um, my virtual office hours, and that just means I'm near my computer. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12 to 1. It's during that time I check and respond to emails. If you email me outside of those time frames and I don't get back to you right away, that's because those aren't my virtual office hours. But I try to do my best to get back to you within 24 hours, okay? This class does not have any mandatory Zoom meetings. Nobody has to log on to Zoom. Nobody. You can do this whole class without ever logging on to Zoom. Um, I try to give you enough videos and instructional videos, including this one, so that you can navigate through this class just fine. If you want to do a Zoom meeting with me during my office hours, that's easy. You just say, hey, can I meet with you on Monday, you know, at 10.30 or whatever, or sorry, 12. It's got to be in between 12 and 1. So let's say you say, hey, can I meet with you Monday at 12? I'll say, sure. I'll set you up as a 15-minute Zoom meeting. I'll send you the link. You log on, I log on. And I'll help you with what you want help with, okay? If you have any questions about the class, extra credit, whatever, or reading, um, but other than that, there's no mandatory Zoom meetings. Um, if you need help with Canvas, call this number. Tell them this number. That, that gives them direct access to your class so they can log in and view what you're looking at. And again, if you don't know how to post a picture on your discussion or whatever, whatever, you know, other questions, they'll help you. I've called them many times, um, helping me set up a lot of these classes. So they're really awesome. Um, use them. Um, check announcements. I do weekly announcements. I'm always, you know, announcing things to the class. You can see that on your home page right up here at top, or you can click your announcements tab and it kind of shows you all the announcements I've had for this class. Obviously you don't have these yet. These are me as a professor when I'll send them out to you, but so it's your responsibility to check these announcements in other words, and to check your emails. You might get an email reminder through a Canvas message that I send you through your, it, let's say I grade you and I give you feedback, it might notify you through an email. you, you got to check those on your own and check your announcements. Okay, so moving along, this is Socrates, this is Credo, this is him at his deathbed drinking hemlock. You might say, well, why in the hell is he doing that? Well, exactly. Why is Socrates famous? So me personally, just to give you a brief rundown of me, I've been studying philosophy for about 20 years. I'm about to finish my PhD, in fact, in January. If all goes well, I'm defending my dissertation in this next month. So you might say, I love philosophy. My first philosophy class was in 1996 with David Lane. He's a professor at Mount Sac as well. He's, he's my mentor. And I, I got blown away in that class. And then I had a long career where I worked in, I, I got an x-ray tech license at Mount Sac. I took their program. Then I went to Loma Linda and I got um, a certificate in nuclear medicine. I became a nuclear medicine tech. Uh, sorry. Even currently as we speak, I'm an x-ray tech and a nuclear medicine tech. I have dual license and I, I can do PET CT, which is positron emission tomography. You might say I did that for about 20 years while I was doing a master's in philosophy and now a PhD. So little by little, I'm working towards this. I've been teaching at Mount Sac for the past six years. I'm finally tenure track, which means I'm full time. So I pretty much teach logic and the ancient and then the modern philosophy classes, intro to philosophy and ethics. But I love what I do. I've been addicted to this since my first class. And I've been on a 20 year plan, you might say, getting blown away each year. So that's me. And I hope you, um, get blown away in this class too. You know, you're going to learn something about these ancient philosophers to medieval and you're going to ask yourself, you know, why do what they say, you know, back then, 2000 years ago, like who cares? Like, why does that matter to me now? Well, I think you're going to find out a lot of it does matter because they ask deep questions about reality, about God, about yourself that they struggled with then. And I think you might be struggling with now. Like I did, like, what am I made of as a human person? Does God exist? Like, what's the good life? How can I know these things are true? A lot of these questions are fascinating. So again, um, some of the questions that we'll go through are right here. What's truth? Why is it important? 
Why is critical? Why are asking critical questions about reality? What's the what's the deal with that? Why is that important? What's the Socratic method? You've heard about that? Like what is it? According to the Greeks, how can one live a good life? So you can read through these questions; they're really fascinating, and a lot of these will be answered through some of these readings. If you scroll down, these are online resources. If you're a new student to online education, if you're not, just skip that. The required text for this class, and this is very important, you can get it through the Mount Sac bookstore or you can go to Red Shelf. There's a few other places you can rent it for 30 or 40 bucks, pretty cheap. But you must get this book on PDF, Kindle, or whatever, or the hard copy. You won't be able to survive this class unless you get the book. So that's up to you. You will not be able to Google these questions on the internet, cut and paste stuff. You're not going to be able to do that. My quizzes are extremely specific to the text, okay? So if you can't get the book, uh, you're going to struggle. So you make that decision on your own. I'm telling you exactly which one to get. I'm even showing you a picture of it. And I say 8th edition. Do not get 7th or earlier editions. They will not work. The 8th edition has certain chapters that are not in the other editions, okay? So, um, homework, your weekly quizzes are 40% of your grade. It's a huge chunk. Weekly discussions, 20%. You'll have a first paper, 15%. A final paper, 25%. Your final paper is your final exam. They're one and the same, okay? So don't say you don't have a final exam. You do. It is your final paper. We'll get to that in a minute. So you might want to say the quiz is the most important part of your grade. Um, all grading's done in Canvas. It's all automatic. Unless I'm grading a paper, then I give you the grades. And I use rubrics. I tell you exactly what I'm looking for. Um, this is a grading scale that I use if you do extra credit. And then ultimately, I use this scale for giving you your final grade at Mount SAC. So it's only A's, B's, C's, D's, or F's. You can look at why I use this scale for your extra credit if you do extra credit. I won't explain that here. You can simply click on this video. I break down all the extra credit options, what to do, how to do them, when they're due, and I tell you exactly how I determine your final grade. Okay, so look at that video. You don't have to do extra credit, but if you want to, it's really good for your grade. Student learning outcomes and objectives. These are the measurable objectives that you'll be able to say, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. By the time you're done with this class, you will know or you will have completed these. You'll be able to tell me. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have analyzed major philosophers from chapters 1 through 15, covering the ancient to medieval period. You'll be able to tell me about their philosophical systems. Not in detail, but I'm just saying you'll, you'll have that exposure. You'll be able to tell me You'll be able to synthesize their philosophical perspectives in relationship to your own lived experience. What's that mean? When democracy, when Democrates talked about atomism and how we are as human persons, like what everything's made of, how does that relate to me? Well, do you believe in his view or not? You know, do you think you're made of physical stuff or not? It's very fascinating. And then slow four or student learning outcome number four is you'll be able to write philosophical essays, you know, They'll show or reveal to me how well you understand arguments um, that these authors make. They're not sharing with you just their opinions. They're sharing with you arguments about reality. What's an argument? This is not a logic class, but some of what I'm teaching you through this course will be logic related. And one of that is arguments. Like, what are they? A, an opinion about something is you have some belief about it, but you haven't really, you know, you're not really decided 100%. You're like, look, I just believe this or I have an opinion on it, blah, blah, blah. An argument is you're rationally demonstrating why you believe what you believe based upon premises. So an argument consists of premises, which are evidence, facts, or reasons to believe. And they line up in a certain way where they have a conclusion, meaning based upon these premises, here's my conclusion. That's an argument. Um, arguments are more precise because you can challenge somebody's premises. If you show them faulty, you can say, well, that conclusion doesn't follow. But if you're presented with an argument, especially a philosophical one, and it looks like, hey, this argument is sound, 
Maybe it applies to your life and you should believe it, meaning it's rational for you to believe the conclusion of the argument. Things like that. So, again, Democritus is giving you his, his opinion on reality. He's giving you an argument. And he's going to give you reasons for why you should believe that argument. Your job as a student is to tell me, do you believe it or not? Why do you believe it or not? Not just, yeah, I think his view sucks, but or his argument sucks, but why? Can you pinpoint why? Can you go after one of his premises? Can you, can you go after what he might cite as evidence or a reason to believe or a fact? And can you dismiss it? Because if you can't, maybe his argument works. Maybe not. Add drop deadlines. You can look at all these. The biggest one for me, right when you start the first week, is did you complete your syllabus quiz and getting to know you? If you have not, by Wednesday night, I will drop you from the class Thursday morning. I've already went over that. But you're an adult student, so it's your responsibility if you want to drop my class or find out those options with the registrar's office, call them, email them, or let me know, email me, or set up a Zoom meeting, I'll go over them with you. Late work, I will not accept late work. In other words, I accept assignments early, but not late. Um, you have the whole syllabus laid out in front of you. It's a six-week class. It's totally doable. But if you are extremely busy and your personal life is crazy, I'm, it's that's up to you. you. You have to calibrate how many classes you take and if you have time to complete the work, but you have to communicate with me in advance and I might work with you, okay? But if you tell me after the fact, that's it's just late. You get zero points for it, okay? And I don't know if I said this already, but I dropped the two lowest quizzes in this class. Yeah, right here. I dropped the two lowest scores of your quizzes. You will have 15 quizzes because there's 15 chapters. I dropped the two lowest, okay? Any questions, again, just get a hold of me. Online class policy. Disregard this. I don't care about the four consecutive weeks of you checking in. I don't, I don't do anything like that. Once you complete your first syllabus quiz and getting to know your assignment, you're in the class. If you fail out, that's up to you. You, you have to drop yourself or whatever. So that's my online class attendance policy. If you want to grade in the class, you have to do the work. If you don't do the work, you fail out. Do I want you to fail out? No, but you know. Um, we live in a free country, so this is up to you. Um, if you want to achieve excellence in this class, just do the readings, um, look at my videos, you should be golden, okay? If you don't understand certain concepts, that's what my videos are for, my personal videos and videos from YouTube that I link. So you're doing reading, you're looking at the videos, you're getting multiple exposures. Um, if, if some of it's just too technical and you can't understand it no matter what, it's fine. My quizzes are easy enough to where you can find the answers from the reading and you move on. Um, some of the answers are super easy. Some are a little bit, you know, you have to think about it. But again, as long as you have the book, you'll be able to find the answers. Um, cheating, cheating and plagiarism. Do not plagiarize. I don't have to do anything other than look at what Mount Sac offers. They have plagiarism software. Let's say you write a seven page paper and you use 10 internet websites and you cut and paste and all that kind of stuff. The Mount Sac plagiarism software will literally tell me exactly which websites you've used and exactly which, what you've copied from. And if you do not cite a person correctly, you're plagiarizing. You will be failed from that paper. Do not do it. I have students who literally turn in entire papers from other students from three or four years before. I will literally know what student you plagiarized from, okay? So don't be lazy. Be diligent. You're a student. You're a college student. You can do this. Properly cite the people from the internet, from the book, or from an outside source, from a YouTube video. Cite them. That shows that you're developing academic rigor. You're, you're becoming more scholarly. You are literally citing people. And that's something that you should get comfortable doing. And then you tell me what you believe and why, and you interact, okay? But the main purpose of this book is for you to interact and to contribute, and I'll go back up here and show you, to The Great Conversation. It's the name of this book. What is that? Well, it's a conversation of philosophical ideas that has started over 2,000 years ago with the pre-Socratic philosophers all the way up until now. But of course, for this class, we're just going to go to the medieval period. They've contributed to this great conversation of ideas. Well, so will you. 
That's what you're going to do in your weekly discussion questions and your papers to me. You're going to tell me what you think you're going to contribute. So you're going to exercise this skill over and over week by week. And that's why I want you to get in the habit of citing people because that's you're going to have to do that in your final paper and your first paper anyways. So again, don't plagiarize. If you have any questions about any of that, you let me know. Otherwise, there's the Mount SAC policies that take it very seriously and so do I. Classroom behavior, you're doing whatever you want to online. Um, the, only, the only thing I'd say on this one is when you email me, put hi Joseph or hi Professor Kramowski. Don't, don't just email me and say, hey, can you do this for me, blah, blah, blah. That comes across as rude. And I share this with you because you're at college now, whether it's here at Mount SAC or any other college. A lot of the professors you interact with, they're not your homeboys or buddies or best friends. They're, they're professionals. So you got to treat them with respect when you're engaging with them. You're not, they're not your text buddy. I can't tell you how many rude emails I've gotten because people, they just, they don't know this. So literally say, hi, Joseph, hi, Professor Kramoski or hi, Professor K or whatever. Tell me what you would like me to help you with. And then, you know, I'll help you. But if you're giving me a quick, like, hey, change this for me, and I'm thinking, whoa, I'm just helping you to develop that habit to be more professional in your email life, okay? You get a lot more out of a professor when you're nice to them. When you're rude, guess how much you get out of them, other than grading your papers. So there you go. You take that as food for thought. Again, if you have any questions, set up a Zoom meeting with me or email me. If you have a disability, let me know. I work with people. I'm a disabled veteran. I served in the military. Um, so I love working with people that want accommodations. Um, the Writing Center. If writing is a second language for you and you struggle with grammar, no problem. Go to the Writing Center. Call them. Go to the site. They would love to help you. If you can prove to me that you went to the Writing Center and they, they'll they uh, have you sign a piece of paper and you can show proof of it, and they always do this, if you upload that proof with your paper, I will not grade you on your grammar. I will just grade you on other parts of the paper, but grammar, I won't even grade you on that because I know the writing center has helped you with it. Okay. So if you're one of those students and English is a second language, or you just struggle with grammar in general, go to them. If you don't know how to develop a thesis statement, if you don't know how to write papers, they will help you. They love doing it. They do it for free and that's their job. Okay. So that's your resource. Use it. I can't tell you how many students throughout these six years I've been teaching that use the Writing Center and they're like, wow, man, this is really helpful for me. You don't want to turn in a paper when you struggle with these kind of things and then have me grade it. I'm going to, I'm going to notice things that you didn't do. I don't see a thesis statement. I don't see any citations. I don't see a lot of grammar errors. If you do this and you get help with the Writing Center before the paper gets to me, they've already worked with you on this. So here you go. Now we're down to the course calendar. So week one, I tell you the dates. I tell you all these um, for each week tells you how many pages you're going to have to read out of the book. So first week, 59 pages. Second week, 46. What I do is I take all the pages for 15 chapters. I divide them by six and I try to evenly distribute them. But sometimes I make it to where you have a lot less pages in a week where you have a paper due. This week you have more pages. You don't have a paper due. Week five, you have a lot of quizzes, but you have no paper. So week six, you have no discussion forum. The pages aren't that high and you have a final paper due. So I kind of break this up differently. Okay. And then you have your important dates. So for each week, it's the same on quizzes. They're all open on Monday. They're all due on Thursday. All of them. You turn them in whenever you want, but come Thursday night, if they're not turned in, it's an automatic zero. All the discussion forums should be open on Mondays. They're all due on Sundays. You do not have to do any work on the weekend in this class, but that's the deadline for you to turn it in on a, is on a Sunday. You could turn this thing on a Friday. But again, on the discussion forums, and I'll show you this, you have to reply to one other student. So you have to make sure that's done for full credit. So you have your quizzes, discussion forum, next week. Quizzes, discussion forum, this one, quiz, First paper due on Saturday, discussion forum Sunday, so a little bit more on that week. But notice you only have one chapter. So all the way down to week six, two quizzes, no discussion forum, but you have a final paper. 
and the final paper is open to you the day after this first paper is due, the first paper is open to you the very first day of class. So you can see the first paper right away. And on these papers, I actually have a video on how to write the paper. I walk you through everything you do. So you might want to look at those videos. I have a video for extra credit. Um, but now let's go to, so let me go down, extra credit. So your final papers due Saturday. I grade those pretty quickly. If you want extra credit, that's all due by Sunday. And these are some important dates. My favorite school that I've never attended and why, you'll have to look at that video of me explaining that to you and why it's important, or at least, you know, if you're bored, you want to watch that. But some of you that love philosophy and the liberal arts and humanities, you're really going to want to look at this because this school is mind-blowing. I went there. I went there on, on campus, and you'll see in the video why it's awesome, and you can see what their syllabus looks like. These are my two favorite websites for doing research in philosophy. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, that's a little bit easier for getting a general understanding of some of these ideas. Very sophisticated is the Stanford Encyclopedia. Boy, that gives you real scholarly stuff right away. But I go here for a lot of my research. For the last 20 years, I've been using these. I, I say 10, but it's really 20. Okay, so let's scroll back up. And now let's go to your modules. And this is where you're going to find all your assignments. Again, this is your orientation module. you got to do these two assignments right away. This one, if you have a question or an answer and you want the whole class to see, you can post it in there and we'll all see it and I'll answer it. You don't have to do that one, though. That's all optional. <clears throat> week one. So for each week, each week is the same. I give you objectives and goals. I'm telling you what's due for that week and, you know, why it's important. And then you'll notice for each week you have your quizzes. For each, for each chapter, I tell, I give you this thing called the essentials from the reading. You can download this if you want or just look at it. But basically it says, look, these are the important things that I think you should know about the reading before you do the reading. So chapter one, one page. These are the very important things that you should know about Hesiod and Homer. You know, the role of the gods. Mortals are not gods. Moderation is the chief virtue. You're going to have to know these, right? Now, can you look at this and go complete the quiz? No. This is just helping you when you do your reading to get the main points. Yeah, some of these kinds of things are on a quiz, but you have to do the reading to get the, the best answer. So take a look at those. Maybe print them out, and while you're doing the reading, you're looking at those too. So when you come across that part in the reading... Um, and then you have your quiz. So let's go to chapter one quiz, click on it. Cool thing about this quiz is that you have 45 minutes to take the quiz and you have three attempts. Um, Canvas will take your top score and that's it. So I give you three tries. And usually each quiz is 10 questions. Well, they're, they're 10 questions long, but it can pull from a possible 30 to 40 questions. So I have a database for each chapter. It, the computer automatically randomly pulls 10 questions. So yes, you can take the quiz multiple times, but you might not get the exact questions. That prevents cheating, but it also, at the same time, helps you get a better score. Okay, so that's, that's really good. And keep in mind, like I said, you can drop the two lowest quizzes. You don't have to do it. Canvas automatically does it for you. It doesn't count it towards your grade. Each quiz is the same. I give you a bunch of pictures, dates that these philosophers existed, and then I give you a little a rundown. So here is very important. I'll do this for every quiz. I tell you, in order to be fully prepared for the quiz, you need to read and understand pages. You know, so here's the Roman numeral, the introduction up to, you know, whatever, that's five pages long. Chapter one, pages one through eight. So, I don't know, 10 to 12 pages right here. If you read those and understand them, you're ready to take your quiz. And then I say, you do not need to watch any videos. These are just an extra layer for your learning. Should you choose to watch them, they're all great videos. You click on this first one. This is me explaining what I think about chapter one and why it's important. Then I'm giving you, and I always do this because I love YouTube and I'm looking at videos all the time. 
I give you really good videos that I think that other YouTubers have made. Some of them are professors, some are not. But sometimes people pour hours and hours and hours into these videos, and I'm thinking, they did a really good job. So you can watch all of these or none of them. You do not have to watch any videos for this class. But some of you love that. You will do the reading. You might be a little confused. Then you look at a video and go, oh, that makes sense. And you get an extra layer of understanding. Some of you, straight up, do the reading, do the quiz, done. You don't ever even look at a video. It's up to you. I give you multiple options, okay? But I tell you every time, you do not, you do not need to watch these. All you, all you have to do is to read and understand these pages to take your quiz. Me personally, I've watched all these videos and I love them. So you can do that. And um, I remind you each time you have three chances to take it. All your quizzes are due Thursday night before midnight. And every week from Friday, Friday from 12 a.m. to 12 noon, you have the answers for the questions you've missed. It tells you the correct answers, but only during those times, okay, on every Friday. So that's it for your quizzes. And every week you're going to have a... Um, a discussion forum. This is open on Monday, so you're going to have it all here. Uh, this one will be open the first day of class. You click on it, and I'm asking you a question from each chapter you read that week. But let me read to you this, and this is very important for you. In order to have sufficient answers for these questions, it will require at least three to four sentences for each answer. If you give me one sentence, you're going to lose points. Also, to get full credit, provide a page number or numbers from the book of where you're finding your answer. This lets me know you've looked at the book and not went to some internet website and posted something that's kind of close to the answer, but not the answer. If you don't give me page numbers, I know you didn't read the book. So, again, if you don't buy the book for this class, you probably won't pass. So, this keeps you honest. And all these answers, um, they're in the book. They're right there. Um, so you can provide quotes. You can paraphrase it in your own words if you want. But if you just give me the page numbers, that's fine. And then give me your answer. For example, question one or chapter one. Describe the gods of Olympus as Homer portrays them. Give me three to four sentences. Give me a page number or two. Done. <laughs> Second one. Coming from chapter two, what problem does Democrates atomism raise for free choice? Okay, go there, read about him. Give me a page number or two from where you're getting your answer. Tell me what Democrates is saying here. Done. Third one, do you think you yourself are made up of only physical stuff like atoms? Explain, like, do you agree with his view or not? Later in this course, I'll share with you a published paper that recently I had in the Journal of Consciousness Studies. It's totally highly academic. It's pretty awesome stuff. And when you read my paper, you'll be able to see how I've contributed to the great conversation of ideas here, what my view is, and how I critique a view like this. Not necessarily his, but so atomism, materialism, Physicalism, they're pretty much all the same. Just as all of reality is made up of only physical stuff or material stuff. And you'll see from my paper whether I agree with that or not. You get a chance to see how I've contributed. So, chapter three In what sense did early Buddhists claim that all things are impermanent? So, give me the answers to that. And every week will be the same. I'll tell you pick one question from above and tell me what you personally think about it. This is where I want you to be critical. So obviously, you're not going to pick the one where I ask you, do you think yourself made up of physical stuff? You already gave me your answer there. I'm asking you to pick one from the chapters. So you give me the answer, let's say, for chapter three, like from the book, right? Then you're going to, if you pick that one, you're going to say, look, I either agree with this or I don't, and here's why. You can't just say, I disagree with this claim on the Buddhist about impermanence. You have to say why you disagree or why you agree. I'm wanting you to be critical. Again, you're going to develop a skill week to week, and that by the time you get to writing a paper, you're already going to be in the mode of, you're already telling it what you think, so the paper should flow pretty easily. And then, each week, the same thing, you got to make at least one reply to one other student. Not like, hey bro, I like what you said. No. I like what you said, 
I either agree with or disagree, but um, how this applies to your life and what, what it made you think of that you hadn't already thought of. So again, you're going to give a critical reflection of what you thought about another student, okay? And that's how I'll grade you. So down here I'm telling you I'm going to look through, I'm going to grade you with a rubric. You can always find these by clicking these three dots. Show rubric. Boom. The first category, did you answer the questions? And you could read all this. And then was it excellent, good, needs improvement, or missing? I'll click one of these, get some points for you. Second category, did you respond to another student before Sunday night? Click through those. And then last one, timeliness. I click all these and I get a grade from 0 to 100, okay? So you're going to have one of these each week. Um, outside of your quizzes, the quizzes are automatically graded. So, And then you have your essentials from the reading for each quiz. So pretty much everything's the same for every week. The only difference is week three and week six, you have a paper. So on this one, I have a video that tells you exactly what to do with my paper. What to do, and I even have a rubric. Here's how I grade you. Okay, so look at my video, look at this, read it. The best thing to do is before you email me with questions, make sure you've listened to my video. I usually answer all of them inside of it. The first paper has to be chapters one through eight. The second paper, can be anywhere from chapters 1 through 15, but you can't repeat a philosopher you've already done in your first paper. Okay? So, um, anyways, you can look at my video on this. I even tell you exactly what bold settings to make in your paper. It keeps you your organization really well. And, again, your final paper is your final exam. And where is it at? Oh, I have to move that over here. Right there. I take off the discussion forum for that. Oh, wait, no, that's from my honors class. I think. Yeah, I think I've taken it off for you. So you just have your quit your two quizzes here and your final paper for this last six week. And again, I got a video. I walk you through all this, how to write your paper, what to do, what exactly uh, section uh, bold. So in your paper, you will literally type in introduction, bold it, bold this, bold that. And then I'm telling you, like, this is what you do here. I walk you through your entire paper in written form. And then I walk it through you with a video. And then you can see the rubric. Here's how I grade your paper. Again, this is a final exam. It's weighted more heavily. But that's pretty much it for your modules. And again, for your syllabus. And by the time you get this video, I'll have a downloadable syllabus. You'll be able to click it and print it out if you want. Otherwise, this first page is your syllabus. Okay? It's got everything on there. Got, you know, what's due. And then you just go into your modules and start doing it. Every week's pretty much the same format. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you're excited to take this class. I hope you learn a lot like I did. Some of you might even become addicted to philosophy and go on and major, you know, undergrad doing that. Let me know. Hope you have fun. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Just reach out to me. Okay, it was a pleasure talking with you.